it's Shannon from Gigi's Fabric Shop, home of Janome and Juki Junkies. And today's first Hoopin' It with Shannon, we're going to make this adorable mug rug right on the embroidery machine. So this adorable watermelon mug rug brought to you by Designs by Juju is made entirely in your embroidery machine in just one single hoop. And I'm going to show you from start to finish how to make this perfect for Mother's Day, summer, really any time of the year. Okay, so let's get started. In today's video, I'm going to show you where to get the pattern, kits and supplies, cutting, and how to assemble this project from start to finish. Okay, so the first step is where to get this watermelon mug rug. And the link to Designs by Juju will be in the description below. It'll be the first link and you'll need to head over there and purchase this design. I'm gonna show you how to find, purchase, and download your file for your next embroidery project. So I'm on designsbyjuju.com and I am actually making a watermelon project. So I'm going to search watermelon in the search bar and then I'm gonna scroll through until I find what I want. And he, this is the design that we're gonna be making together. So for you, you wanna add this to your cart. If you are new to Designs by Juju, you'll need to create an account, add it, and then check out. I have already purchased this, so I'm gonna head on over to my download folder. When you click that drop down, all of your file formats will appear. Don't click all of them, just click what is relevant to your embroidery machine. I'll be sewing on a Janome 500E, so I'm gonna download the Jeff file. You'll wanna head on over to your downloads folder, and there will be all of the information that you'll need for this project, from instructions to color guide, and most importantly, all of the files for this project. Now remember, uh, my screen might look different than yours. I am working on a Mac, so your window screen might be slightly different. So here's your instructions, here's your color chart, and here is the folder that will have all of the different sizes for your project. Again, mine will look different because I actually have software that can read these files. You will not actually be able to see any images in your folders. What you'll wanna do next is download the file for your project. There are five sizes, five by seven to nine and a half by 14. So make sure you select a size that's going to accommodate the size hoop that you'll be sewing in. I'll be sewing in a six by 10. The next step you'll wanna do is copy the file and then you'll want to paste it to your USB. Now remember, if it's not plugged in yet, you'll wanna plug it in before you paste it to your USB. So here's my folder, and I'm just gonna paste it in. And this is my folder that I'll be sewing on. Now, your USB isn't meant to be a filing cabinet. It's just meant to sew your upcoming projects. So we shouldn't see more than 30 or 40, especially if they're big projects. So just remember, that's what your desktop or your documents is on your computer. So quick note, my USB has already been formatted for my Janome 500E. So if your USB isn't formatted, Check your manual. You may need to do that before you download any files for your USB. So simply what file formatting means for the USB when you plug it in, it's actually gonna create this EMBL folder on my USB. So it's really important that this folder exists because when you click on it, that is where all of your files are. If you do not have the EMBF folder, your machine will not read your files. Okay, so let's talk about kits and supplies. And so we will offer two different kits for this project. The first one is a fabric kit, and you'll see that the second link in the description below. And the fabric will be everything that you will need to make this kit. The second, we have a thread bundle, and it's all the coordinating thread for this project, and that will be the third link below. 
All right, so a quick note, if you're watching today and you click the link below and we have sold out of our kits, no worry. When you download this project from Designs by Juju, it'll give you all the instructions you need from fabrics and supplies that you can source on your own. So what's not included in the kit is your batting, your stabilizer, and if you want to use SFF 101 for your applique. All of these things will be available for purchase. Just follow the links in the description below. Okay, so once you've downloaded your design, the first thing that you're going to want to do is decide the size of the watermelon mug rug that you want to make. When you open the file, Designs by Juju will offer five different sizes, and you get to choose the size according to the size of the hoop that you want for your embroidery machine. Once you decide the size of the hoop, it will give you very clear cutting instructions by each layer, whether it's the top or the bottom, the backing. It will give you clear cutting instructions and sizes for that. So I'm gonna go through quickly the fabrics that I used for this project. So we have our top and bottom, and I always like to um, uh, do a name tag just because when you're in the middle of a, of, of a project, sometimes you might forget what fabric goes where. So we have this top and bottom. You can see here, top and bottom. We have our backing. And so it's, it says for us to cut it and fold it in half, so I've done that. Of course, I have our batting, that's very important. Next up is our watermelon slices. So you can see here with my project, I actually did um, alternating red just to give it a little bit of texture. You don't need to do that, but I decided to do that. So I've got all my watermelon slices cut out here for the project. One thing to note is um, for your applique, I would recommend adding SOF 101 um, just to prevent any puckering. So I've already added that. It's on the back already, um, something that you'll want to do after you cut your fabric. So after the watermelon slices, then I cut my flowers out. You can see here, because I'm just doing it in a 6 by 10 hoop, my flower is a little small. So I've got my flower in yellow, I have my center in orange, and then I have my leaves in green. Um, in the center, I already have that cut out, and that's my turquoise. So, once you have everything cut, you are ready to start assembling. Okay, so my Janome 500E is turned on, and I'm going to insert my USB that has my file right into the machine. Now remember, your machine will automatically default to the last file that you embroidered. So for me, my machine is blank, and I'm going to click on my file folder, and here I'm going to click on my EMBF folder, which is my USB. Well, I'll click on the folder, and now we're going to search for my watermelon design. And there we are. I'm going to click on this, and we're going to push OK, and the bar is going to move into the first position. So now we're going to show you how to hoop your stabilizer. For any projects, you want to make sure that you're using the stabilizer that's recommended for your project. So they're going to change depending on what you do. So for this, we're going to add our stabilizer over the hoop. I uh, want to make sure it's larger than your hoop so that you're able to pull it taut. We're going to insert our frame, just like so, and then we're going to screw our hoop and tighten that top frame. So you'll want to screw it till it's totally flush and tight. And then what I'd like to do is come in and just pull it taut ever so slightly. And now we're ready to add her to the machine. Okay, so we're back at the machine to insert our hoop, but before we do so, you'll see here on the screen, it wants us to insert our SQ-20B on our Janome 500E. This is the hoop, and you'll see it says hoop SQ-20B, and this is what we'll need to stitch out the, this design. But for today's purposes, I actually used a larger hoop to help illustrate all the variety of steps for this machine. All right, so now we're gonna load our hoop into our machine, and you'll see our presser foot is down. We're gonna lift her up once, and then we're gonna lift her up a second time, and that will extend the, the foot entirely so we have enough space to slide our hoop in toward the pens. You'll see there's two pens and two nodules, and what we wanna do is open, and then the, they slide right into the pens. And when you release it, it will lock. Okay, so the very first step that we're gonna to wanna to do is actually do our placement stitch for the batting. I'll go ahead and get started. I'm gonna do this in a black so it's easy for you guys to see. 
Sorry about that, I forgot to put my table on. My hoop was dragging. But now that I have my table back on, let's get this placement stitch started up again. All right, so now that it's done doing its placement stitch, the next step is our batting. And so what we want to do is take our hoop out of the embroidery machine. I think sometimes it's easier to see the placement stitch, so you make sure that you're placing your batting um, on correctly. So uh, sometimes it's harder if you can't see. So you just want to make sure that all of your lines are covered, and this looks good. And I'm going to go ahead and put it right back in the machine. I'm not going to change my thread out. I'm going to keep it at black so you, it's easier for you to see. So I'll put my presser foot down and we'll get started with the tack down. Make sure you don't keep your hands in the embroidery machine. You don't want to sew them over, but you also want to make sure that you're keeping the batting down if you didn't use any tape or pens. So sometimes batting tends to stick to stabilizer pretty easy. That's why I actually didn't put any tape down. You'll see me actually put tape down as we move continue through the, through the steps. Okay, so now that that tack down is complete, we're going to want to take this out of the hoop and trim the batting around the tack down stitch. So I like to use um, curved scissors for this. That way it's really easy to get right next to the line, the placement stitch. Make sure the curved is straight down and just trim right along the edge. Try not to cut the stitch. Take your time. This doesn't have to be a race. Although I like to tell myself to take my time. Sometimes I think it is a race. <laughs> I love these, these scissors, these easy snips with the curve. Uh, they, make, they make cutting like this just so much easier. Okay, so we've trimmed that up and then we're gonna wanna put it back in the machine. And we're gonna do a tack down for, for the center. So I'll put my presser foot down, and here we go. Okay, so now we're gonna get ready to put our um, center fabric down, which um, is my turquoise, but I'm going to actually change my thread and I'm going to add my blue thread. You don't need to switch your thread here. Um, you're not going to see it, but I actually um, am doing this step because I'm, when I'm done with this tack down, it's going to quilt. So I just find sometimes it's just an, you're going to do the step, you might as well just do it now. So I'll take this out so, so you can see what I'm, I'm gonna do. So here's our placement stitch right here. And I'm gonna put my center fabric in, in the middle here. So we have it laid down and we're gonna put this right back in the machine. All right, so this stitch is gonna be our tack down stitch. And here we go. So like I was saying earlier, you, you didn't need to change your thread because you're actually not gonna see this once you, you trim everything away. Um, but you'll see why I did because the very next step it's going to do is actually do the quilting design in the middle. So you do it now or you do it later, you're, you're gonna have to change it out eventually. So it's gonna go around one more time. But now that it's done with this placement stitch, all we're doing is trimming the edge of the fabric around the mug rug. Just make sure you follow the directions. So we're just gonna be trimming on the sides, but we're gonna leave these, um, we're not gonna trim these quite yet. Okay, so while that was quilting, I realized I made a little boo-boo. We all make boo-boo. So I had said to trim around the edges here, but actually what you wanted to do was trim this away and leave the edges here. So you're gonna actually end up having fabric on the outside here and the outside here, you wanna trim away here. So, sorry about that. I was going off memory and I wasn't actually looking at the instructions. That's why it's always good to have the instructions right in front of you. All right, so once we've completed with that, we're gonna put the hoop back into the embroidery machine. The next step is um, the quilting for the mug rug. So let me, if you haven't done so already, you wanna change your thread 
uh, to the coordinating color that you've selected for the center of your fabric. For me, I'm doing light turquoise, uh, which is the color of my center fabric. So I'm gonna place my pressure foot down and start. Now this probably will take, depending on the speed that you have on your machine, this is probably gonna take about six to eight minutes. It also will depend on the size of mugwort that you're doing. Um, but oftentimes, this is one of my favorite parts that you can just, you get mesmerized by the, by the work of your embroidery machine. It's quite fascinating that a machine like this is such a workhorse and can actually quilt in the hoop. If this is new for you, um, and this, is, this might just be your first project, welcome in. Um, this is actually my very first YouTube video. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure how what you all think. De definitely let me know in the comments below. I'm sure each one I'll get a little bit better. But I've been embroidering for over five years and I am really excited to be with Gigi's Fabric Shop and bringing such wonderful projects and designers your way. Uh, I think it's gonna be an amazing community and we are just at the very beginning. So now that it's done quilting, the next step is to actually do the center of the watermelon. So those are the six cuts of fabric that you did in red, um, and that's gonna be the first step. So but what I'm gonna do is actually change my thread out so it's easy for you to see um, the, the tack down uh, stitch, because I think if it's in blue, you're not gonna see it on my blue center. So I'm gonna actually put my black back in. You probably don't wanna do that. Um, I'd go ahead and probably put red down if you want, if you're gonna do the red fabric. But I'm gonna change it to black so you guys can see my black placement stitch. All right, so I'm gonna thread this up and we're gonna get our first watermelon slice. So this applique for the watermelon slices does come in six. And so what we're gonna do is it'll have a tack down stitch and then placement stitch. And it's gonna do this six times for your six colors of the reds that you selected for the middle of the, of the watermelon. Okay, so as I mentioned at the top of the video, I actually did put a little bit of SFF 101 on the back of my fabric so it can prevent puckering. So now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm not gonna take my hoop out of the frame. I'm just gonna lay my, my first red um, piece of fabric right over the watermelon. So I cut them pretty big, so that way I know I have enough, enough fabric. And I'm gonna keep it in black so that you guys can see the uh, tack down stitch. And here we go. All right, so that's gonna be our first part of our watermelon. We're gonna do this step six times, and this is what applique is. So you'll have your tack down stitch that's here, and what you wanna do is take your scissors and you wanna trim around this, making sure that you don't cut the thread. So take your time um, and just, if you're using the curved scissors, you can get really nice and close to the tack down stitch. And you can turn your frame. Just take your time and go around. This is why I did the black. And sometimes you might wanna do an alternating color so it's easy for you to see. All right, I'm just have this little bit left. And don't worry if you don't get it perfect. There will be a beautiful satin stitch um, that we'll do uh, at the end. So we'll put the frame back in. And we will move to the next piece of the watermelon. And this will be your tack down. I actually am using a different red fabric, so I'm gonna go ahead and put that down. So here's the black outline. So we'll just make sure you wanna cover all of the placement stitch and then push start. Sometimes when we do applique, I'll use heat and bond. Um, and then actually use a little bit of heat when I'm done. But because this is just such a small space and it's just a mug lug, I, um, I felt SF, SF 101 is, did the trick for me. But if you wanna use heat and bond, you can do that as well. We're gonna trim away our second piece. So you wanna use your scissors. And like I said, just go along your guide, your placement stitch. Now I know I'm doing this on my 
embroidery table, but definitely if you want to take this over to your cutting board um, or your cutting station that you might have, you can definitely move this around. Just make sure that when you do, you're not really moving the stabilizer in the hoop. You do want to keep that intact um, so nothing moves out of the way so it doesn't come off registration. Okay, okay so now we're ready for our third and center piece. I'm going to put my presser foot down and here we go with our placement stitch. And so because I'm doing alternating uh, red just to bring in some tones of the fabric, I'm going to go back to the first fabric that I, I used. And we're going to put that down. Let her ride again. Now, probably if I was doing this, I would have used a little bit smaller pieces of fabric. Um, this is really to help illustrate the stitches and making, ma really just making sure that we're, we've got enough coverage. Uh, don't feel like you have to have these ginormous pieces. You could probably have done it in half for sure. Okay, so now that we've made the first three, uh, I think we might have the hang of it. And now we're gonna move in to fast forward and make some magic happen and finish these up quickly. Okay, so now that we've finished our watermelon, it's really starting to take a little bit more shape. We're gonna continue with the applique before we move into the satin stitch. And now we're gonna work on our flower. So I'm gonna uh, move my presser foot down. The first that we're gonna do is the tack down stitch for the leaves of the flower. And so it's actually gonna um, start back up and yep, so see how it's gonna have, there'll be two sets of leaves on either flower. So we wanna make sure that you have a piece of fabric that is wide enough to cover both of those areas. All right, here we go. Okay, now that we're finished with that, we're gonna take our hoop out. And like we did with the watermelon pieces, we're going to trim away our fabric. Um, get as close as you can to the leaves, but remember we are gonna cover it with a, a nice satin stitch. So you actually won't see this black. Like I said earlier, I'm just using black too. So it's easier for you guys to, to see. Don't you love this mug rug? I think it's so happy and cheerful and the colors are so vibrant. It's making me want spring and summer here just a little bit faster. Okay, and so now we're ready for our next stitch for the flower. Just two more before we're able to do our satin stitches, which is always so exciting because that's when it comes, really starts taking shape, I think. All right, so I've got my yellow for my flower. I'm just gonna put it down here. So I don't know if, as you guys were, if you're sewing along with me, um, you can tell the SFF 101, um, if you used it, really does give more structure to your fabric and it helps it from puckering. I, I, I always recommend when you do applique, um, either heat and bond or SFF 101, um, it's important to make sure that we're using these type of products to prevent puckering. Okay, so the flower's done. I'm gonna take it out of the hoop and trim it. Okay, let me just trim her up a little bit more. Sometimes it's nice to have a, uh, a lint roller around um, in these tight little cor corners when you really wanna get as close as you can. Sometimes that can be a nice thing. All right, okay, so our next and final step of this applique is our center of our flower. And if you're doing our fabric kit, um, that's gonna be the orange one. So we're gonna put our presser foot down and start the first stitch. Okay, and put her down and there she goes. All right, and that tack down is just about done, and we have one more trimming to do. All right, there we go. Our applique, how adorable is she? The next step is actually 
the satin stitches along the watermelon. Uh, that's gonna be the first grouping, and then the second will be, I think, the seeds, and then we'll follow on with the flower. And so I'm gonna change out my thread, and I'll be back in just a second. Okay, so I've changed my thread to red, uh, and I selected that because that's what I want the border of my watermelon to be. And so it's gonna do a satin stitch all the way around and in between. So this is gonna take a little bit of time, so we'll probably speed this up, and I'll see you in a little bit. So we're back with our satin stitch for our watermelon mug rug. And what we're doing is this brine accent, which is in glide thread and the color is kiwi. So it's a bright, vibrant green. It almost looks like a scalloped edge once, um, once it's complete. Okay, so I have switched out my thread to glide thread the colors melon, which I think is so appropriate for the watermelon mug rug. And this is really the perimeter of the brine. Uh, we're doing this in this darker shade of green. It's also gonna all be done in the leaves. And this is, again, a beautiful satin stitch. And uh, so it's gonna take just a little bit to stitch out. So let's watch. And then uh, I'll show you some features of the Janome 500 in a little bit. So, so as I mentioned, I am sewing on the Janome 500E. And what I love about this screen is that it'll actually have a, that little X that you see there is a cursor where it will show you where you are stitching on your design. And so if you have to go forward or backwards, it's gonna show you where you are, uh, which I think is, is fantastic. So you know what steps are coming up. So right now we are doing the leaves on the other, outside of the flower. And you can see here that I'm at stitch 12,000 of 18,000 stitches for this design. And so uh, I love the count. So again, if your thread breaks, it's really easy for you to jump forward or even jump back if you need to. So we're back and I have switched out my thread uh, for the perimeter of the flower. This is gonna be our next step. And uh, it's, a, it's a bright yellow. And again, it'll be done in this beautiful satin stitch. Uh, on the perimeter of that flower. So we're gonna let that stitch out. So I just switched out my thread and this is gonna be the final stitching of our flower. Uh, and I'm using Firestorm and we're gonna get this center stitched out again in a satin stitch and I'll be back in just a second. Now we're gonna finish our final satin stitches for the decorative uh, piece of our watermelon. And these are our watermelon seeds. And so I just switched it to black and uh, there'll be a few seeds that we will uh, stitch out in our satin stitch again throughout the watermelon. And I'll see you on the other side when this is finished. Okay, so we are in our next step of putting together this wonderful watermelon mug rug. So we've wrapped up on the decorative stitches in the center of the mug rug. And now our next step is going to be to add the placement line for both the top and the bottom for that green gingham fabric. So we're gonna go ahead and let the placement stitch run for on the top of the mug rug. We're using that green and white gingham that's gonna be placed at the top and the bottom of our watermelon mug rug. And so what you're going to want to do is position that fabric strip right side facing down, re really parallel to that placement line, uh, about an eighth to a quarter inch right above or over rather that placement line. So take your time. If you have to take it out of the hoop, please do so. You want to make sure um, that you are covering that placement line. And once you're ready to go, we will put her back in the machine and we're going to start stitching that tack down to really secure our top portion of our fabric strip for our mug rug. So it's gonna run it over twice just to make sure it's tacked down really good. Okay, so our placement stitch has been completed. Now I'm using a, a black so you really can see the thread color and, and it doesn't really matter. You're, you're not gonna see it anyway. So the next step really is to fold that top layer over um, that placement stitch and you wanna make sure that you are smoothing it out uh, I love to use fabric tape here uh, to make really secure your uh, fabric down 
on the stabilizer. Um, you can use pens, but sometimes that gets tricky depending on where, where you're placing them in the stabilizer. But fabric tape is a great, a great option. We have a Kimberbell fabric tape. We have Kimberbell tape dispensers. They're in beautiful colors. Anyway, so I'm making sure it's a little taut because um, I don't want any puckering here. And we're going to put her right back in the machine to stitch down our tack down stitch now that we've right, made so sure that that top portion is really uh, secured with our fabric tape. So this pass is gonna go through twice to make sure that top portion is really secured. We're gonna repeat the same process down below um, for the bottom portion of the mug rug, starting down with our placement stitch and then our tack down stitch. Okay, so our next step we're gonna do is the design that's gonna go on the top and bottom border, this really in intricate design. So I switched my thread out to my melon green, which is the same green that's along the perimeter of the watermelon. So we're gonna stitch this out, and then, then, then we can move to the back of the mug rug. But for right now, we're gonna do this design stitch out. Okay, so we are on our final step, and that is to add the back of the mug rug. And so what we wanna do is position the folded pieces and I did press the folded pieces just so it would have a nice, um, nice crisp edge. We can trim all those threads here after we're done. And so what you wanna do is um, place the folded piece of your back of your fabric and um, position it into the center. And so you can use the guide of your hoop. Um, all, the, all hoops have a little guide in the center and you can use that as your guide. The, your other piece, you'll wanna uh, slightly overlap that. Just like that. I would say it's a good rule of thumb to add a little bit of tape here just to make sure that everything stays down and doesn't get caught. And then we're gonna take it back and do our final stitch. Just wanted to make sure that everything got caught. And we're beautiful and we are in the home stretch. All we need to do is we'll take this off the hoop, we'll go to our cutting mat and trim it up, and then we'll flip it. Okay, so we're at our cutting table and we are ready to take our project out of the hoop. So you wanna unscrew your hoop and take the project out. We'll take this all this tape off that we had to secure our project. So now what we're gonna do is trim our project. Um, and this is this line around here, This it's green, it's the melon co color. We're gonna use that as our guide. And we're gonna go around the mug rug about a quarter of an inch, so you can just line it up. All right, that's one side. Who's excited to see the final project? I hope you guys enjoyed this. I'd love to know in the comments section what you, what you thought. Now we're gonna trim the corners. So when you flip it over, we're gonna have nice corners that are pointed. Alrighty, so who, don't cut your fingers though. All right, who is ready to turn her inside out? Put your hand in and uh, and we're gonna flip her around. You'll be able to trim off any of the thread tails that you have, because you probably will have some, and that's okay. So we'll get a pointer here for the corners, just using my fingers right now. And you can press her when you're done. I'm gonna get my scissors, I'm gonna trim these up. What do you guys think? Let's see, my seeds. Tell them about your battle scar oh. on, your, on your arm. Oh, I know, and I forgot to wear a Band-Aid. Show them and tell them what happened. No, I don't. <laughs> so, you guys, I ran into the I ran into the corner of this grid roll cooler, uh, ruler. Literally, like, just ran into it and put a about an inch gouge in my arm, and it's still healing. So. What's the worst 
sewing accent you've ever had, comment those down below. We'd love to hear that. <laughs> I'd love to know. All right, so we flipped our project and take a look how beautiful the watermelon mug rug is. And I mentioned earlier why I love glide thread. So not to mention it's made in the United States, but it's virtually lint free. And look at these colors pop, the greens, the yellows, the orange, even even the red, the beautiful satin stitch. Um, I, I don't embroider with anything else but glide thread. All right, so that's a wrap. And like I said, this was my very first video with Hoopin' It with Shannon. So hopefully you guys loved it. I want some thumbs up. Um, let me know what you liked, maybe what you did it. I'm sure I will get better, I promise. If we had everything happen to us that shouldn't have happened to us today, it did. We lost our audio. We lost batteries twice, um, but we're still here with you. And it's Friday night, it's seven o'clock, but we're doing it for you. And we're so excited. So comment below if you have any questions at all, we'll be answering them in real time when this launches. And if you have any questions, you can always call me at the shop at 813-661-9000. We will be bringing projects like this to you on a regular basis. And I can't wait to see what you're making in the hoop next time.